Oftentimes, we have many different characters and skins in our game and we want to give our players the option to choose which they want to use. Well, in this video, you will be learning how to make a character selection system for your game. Alright, let's begin. So in my game project, I have a scene which I have named character selection. In this scene, we are going to set up the character sprite, character name, a next and back button to toggle between characters, and lastly, a play button which brings us to the game scene. Firstly, we want to set up the character sprite. So I've prepared 4 character sprites for this tutorial, and we want to simply drag in any character sprite into the scene. I'm going to rename this object to selected character. Next, I'm going to create a new text under canvas and rename it to character name. I'm going to place it right below the character sprite. You can skip this step if you don't want to include the character name. Next, we want to create a new button and rename it to next button. I'm going to place it on the right side of the character sprite. Next, we want to create another button and rename it to back button. I'm going to place it on the left side of the character sprite. Lastly, we want to create another button and rename it to play button. I'm going to place it at the bottom of the scene. Now that we are done setting up the UI, we need a way to store the different characters information because each character has their own unique sprite and name. Of course, we could create an item prefab for each character and switch between them. However, this is prone to error and it's very inconvenient. So instead, we could use scriptable objects. Scriptable objects are basically just data containers. Firstly, we want to create a template that defines what information each character should hold. So let's create a new c -sharp script called character and open it up. We do not need the start and update function, so let's go ahead and delete it. Next, let's delete the mono behavior base class as we do not need it as well. Next, let's create a public string called character name and a public sprite called character sprite. If you do not have any names for your character, you can remove the character name variable. Lastly, we want to add a system.serializable attribute right above our class name. This is so that our character sprite and character name variable will show up in the inspector. Alright, we are done defining what information the character should hold. Basically, there should be a sprite and name for each character. Save the script and head back to Unity. Now we want to create another c -sharp script and we will name it character database. Alright, let's open it up. Go ahead and delete the start and update function as we won't be using it and we do not want to derive from mono behavior as well because we won't be attaching this script to any game objects. Instead, we want to use scriptable object. Next, we need to reference the character script we created earlier, so public character with a closed square bracket and we will name our variable character with a small letter C. The reason why we need to add a close bracket is because we have more than one character. So we need to make our character variable into an array. Next, we want to create a public integer called character count. This variable will store the number of characters we have in the game. So how do we get the number of characters? We do a get return character dot length. Basically, it's going to return the number of characters we have in our array. Next, we need a way to retrieve the selected character information. So we do a public character and we will call this function getCharacter with an integer parameter called index and we will just return character square bracket index. Lastly, we need a way to create our character database. So above the class name, we need to add a create asset menu attribute. This will basically tell Unity to make it possible to create this object through create asset menu. Alright, save the script and head back to Unity. Now if we right click on our project, head over to create, you will notice that we can now create a character database. Alright, let's click on it. Select the character database object in your project and in the inspector tab, you will notice that we can now add the number of characters we have in our game. 
So in my case, I have four characters, so I will give it a value of four. You don't have to follow me exactly. If you have three or even 10 characters, just put in that value. Once you have entered a value, you will notice we are now able to add a name and sprite for each character. So now we simply need to assign the sprite and name for each character. So let's add in character one sprite and give it a name. And I'm going to do the same for the remaining characters as well. All right, we now have a character database with all the characters information. So right now, we just need to simply extract the information from the database and display it in the game. So let's create another c -sharp script and we will name it character manager. All right, let's open it up. We do not need the update function, so let's go ahead and delete it. And we need a reference to our character database. So let's create a public character database and we will name it character db. Next, we want to create a public text called name text and a public sprite renderer called artwork sprite. These two variables are referenced to the selected character and character name back in Unity. Now we need to add the Unity Engine.ui namespace at the top. The reason why we need this namespace is because our text type variable is a UI element. And therefore, to access the properties of UI elements, we need the Unity Engine.ui namespace. Lastly, we want to create a private integer called selected option. We will give it a value of zero. This variable is for us to keep track on which character is currently being selected. Below the start function, let's create a new public function called next option. This function will be called when players click on the next button. So firstly, we need to increase the selected option value by one. So selected option plus plus. Next, we need to check if the selected option value has reached the total number of characters we have. So if selected option is more than or equals to character db dot character count, we want to set the value of selected option back to zero. If you're wondering how we got this character count variable, we actually created this variable back in our character database script. Basically, we are just cycling through our entire character database. All right, now we need to update the character sprite and character name. So let's create a new private function called update character with an integer parameter called selected option. Firstly, we need a reference to our character script. So we create a character type variable called character and it will be equals to character db dot get character with the selected option variable in the bracket. The get character function was created back in our character database script and we are just calling it here. Next, we want to set the artwork sprite variable to be equals to character dot character sprite. And lastly, we want to set the name text variable to be equals to character dot character name. Basically, what we are doing here is retrieving the character information from the database and updating the sprite and name tags in our game. All right, now let's head back to the next option function and we want to call the update character function over here. Next, let's create another public function called back option. Firstly, we want to reduce the selected option value by one. So selected option minus minus. Next, we need to do an if statement to check if selected option is less than zero. If it is, we will set selected option to be equals to character db dot character count minus one. And similar to next option, we need to call the update character function. Let's head over to the start function and we want to call the update character function as well. Save the script and head back to Unity. Let's attach the character manager script to the selected character object and we want to assign our character database, artwork sprite and name tags. Next, select the next button and we want to call the next option function when players click on the next button. Select the back button and we want to call the back option function when players click on the back button. Alright, let's give it a try. Okay, you can see that it's showing the first character I have in my database. And if I click on the next button, it shows the other characters I have in my database. And once it reaches the last character, it returns back to the first character. Let's try the back button as well. Okay, perfect. Everything is working well so far. Let's exit play mode. And now we need a way to save the character that is being selected. 
So let's head back to our character manager script. So a simple way to store and assess player preferences between game sessions is by using player prefs. So let's create a private function called load and a private function called save. In the save function, we want to use the set integer function to save our data. What this line of code does is that it stores the selected option variable into the selected option key name. Now in the load function, we need to use the getInteger function to retrieve our data since we save it as an integer. What this line of code does is that we are setting the value of selected option to be equals to the value that has been stored in the selected option key name. Head over to the next option function and we want to call the save function at the end. Head over to the back option function and we want to call the save function at the end as well. Next, head over to the start function and we want to do an if statement to check if there is any saved data from the previous game session. If there's no data in the selected option key name, we will simply set the selected option variable to be zero. Else, we will just call the load function. Lastly, I'm going to just add a change scene function for me to move to the game scene. You don't have to add this function if you already have a button that will bring you over to the game scene. Alright, let's save the script and head back to Unity. Okay, let's try it out. If I change my character, exit play mode, and enter again, it's going to save my previous game session character. Alright, perfect. Now all that's left to do is the game scene. So let's head over to our game scene and I'm going to drag in any character sprite and rename it to player. Now I'm going to create a player script for my player and open it up. I'm going to remove the update function as I do not need it. Next, we are going to simply copy and paste some codes from the character manager script. So let's head over to the character manager script. And we want to copy the character db, artwork sprite, and selected option variable. Let's paste it in the player script. Head back to the character manager script and we want to copy the load function and update character function. Let's paste it in the player script. I'm going to remove the name text line of codes because I won't be showing the character's name in the game scene. Head back to the character manager script. And lastly, we want to copy whatever that is in the start function. Let's head back to the player script and paste it in the start function as well. Save the script and head back to Unity. Attach the player script to the player game object. Next, let's assign the database and character sprite. Alright, let's head back to our character selection scene. I'm going to call the change scene function on my play button. And let's try it out. I'm going to randomly choose one character and click play. Alright, perfect. You can see that in my game scene, it shows the character that I selected. So that's how you create a character selection system. Alright, that's all for this video. If you find this helpful, don't forget to click on the like and subscribe button for more Unity tutorials. I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.